get cut on the job. And the reason I said she's crazy is because she's just doing so much for Jesus. And I remember, I'll never forget, the first day on the clock, she said, uh, I started at Trinity, and she came up to me, and she said, hey, you're the new youth pastor. I said, yeah. And she said, awesome. You're doing a school assembly on Tuesday. And I was like, what? And uh, I had no idea that I was, like, getting thrown into the mix like that. But I'm so thankful for her. We've She's become just such a great friend over the last 10 years. Um, and honestly, to be a youth pastor that gets put up in front of 2,000 kids the first week that you're in your city, it's pretty special. Uh, Tara, I'll let her tell you more about what she does, but as far as missionaries go, I think she's the greatest missionary in America to our public schools. So would you guys give it up for our friend? Woo! Will satisfy 
favor. Your people will rebuild the ancient ruins and will raise up the age of foundations. You will be called repairer of broken walls, restorer of streets with dwellings. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, we just ask that your spirit would come and move amongst us, God. Let the words that I speak be from you, God. Let them penetrate. Let your word go forth, God. Let it bring encouragement and empowerment to your people this morning. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Isaiah 58, verse 12, is one of my absolute favorite verses. For those of you who don't know how I came to Trinity, let me give you a very quick version of it. I was um, living in Australia for a time, but I'm originally from St. Louis. And so Pastor Becky, who's a senior pastor at Trinity Cedar Hall, happened to just really have this burden for schools, but she didn't know what to do. She didn't know how to impact the public schools. So she started a Bible study with some coaches, but she just knew there was something more. There had to be more than Trinity could do for schools. So she went to a conference in Australia, a big, massive Hillsong conference, and happened to find out that I was now living in St. Louis and running a school program. So get in contact with them, and first of all, I had never heard of Cedar Hill, Never heard of Trinity Church and never heard of Jen and Becky Hennessy. I was completely clueless. And these pastors reach out to me and say, we'd like to do public school ministry. We don't know how. We want to put our youth pastors on school campuses. But we're just, we're completely at a loss. Can you come help us? So I flew to Dallas and met them for the first time. And we start dreaming, literally dreaming about what it would be like to do school programs. Now, I was doing them on a small scale in St. Louis. I was working out in East St. Louis, which is a really rough community. We were having a lot of success when it came to stopping teen pregnancy and doing, doing programs in the school during the school day. But I'd never done anything at this large of a scale. And so we start dreaming. Pastor Jim is sitting at his kitchen table and he says to me, what's this going to cost? And, you know, it's just, it's a fact. There is a cost to do ministry. There is a, a real cost to buy supplies and to go into schools. And I wrote down a number, and he looked at it, and he said, okay, we don't have that, but we're going to do it. Because if God is in this, we'll find a way. And I was like, I like this guy. Because I've never had money before to do anything. (laughs) I had never done ministry where God gave me the money first. I'd always done ministry where you got the vision, and then God provided. So I was like, okay, I'm cool with these people. Other people probably would have run and been like, you call me when you have the money. I was like, no, we're on the same page. I'm good with this. So I actually trained another couple that came to Dallas, and they backed out the week before we were supposed to start school programs. So I called Pastor Jim, and I said, I'm so sorry if they're not coming. And he said to me, Tara, we've already committed. The church, the, the mayor knows, the superintendent knows, the school district knows. Like, we've already put this out there that Trinity Church is going to go into schools and is going to do mentoring programs, and you're coming, and you're moving your whole organization here. And I said, okay. <laughs> Well, give me 24 hours, and I will call you back tomorrow. And I said, just pray. Just pray for me. And at that point, I knew there was really only one solution, and that was for me to come and to train and and do the program. And so I called him back 24 hours later, and I said, I want my children. They were kindergarten and first grade, second grade when we came. I said, I want them to start school at Trinity, and I know school starts in a week. So I will be in Cedar Hill in five days. With all my stuff in a U-Haul, I have nowhere to live. I haven't even looked at houses because I didn't think I was coming, but we will be there. So give me the name of a hotel and we'll just we'll figure it out when we get there. In five days, I moved to Cedar Hill, Texas. Never had a house, nothing. So when we arrived in Cedar Hill, believe you me, there was this moment that I went, oh my gosh, I'm homeless, first of all. Um, that's a little bit shocking. All of my stuff is in a U-Haul in a hotel parking lot. I have never met these people before, other than Pastor Jim and Becky, who I'd met twice by that point. And I'd never been to Cedar Hill um, as far as, like, looking for houses. And here I am. Hello. And what began to happen is, on top of all of that, I had no money. I didn't have money to move. I didn't have money for rent. You know how with rent you have to put, like, a deposit plus a month's rent down? Didn't have any of that. But within a week, over $10,000 came in. People just started hearing the story and started giving it, saying, we know you need a house, put this towards a house. We know you need a refrigerator, put this towards a refrigerator. We know you need a washer and dryer. We know that you need bunk beds for the kids. We didn't have anything. And within a week to two weeks, everything was provided for. And new stuff, not even cheap old stuff. And I knew at that moment that crazy faith 
Yeah. Crazy faith yeah. will get you crazy results. So good. Because yeah. God responds to crazy faith out of their faith. Yeah. And that is how my journey at Cedar Hill started. So we thought that it was just going to be like one school. We're going to go into the school across the street from the church, Bessie Coleman Middle School. And then one school turned into two schools, and two schools turned into three schools, and then counselors started calling other counselors, and before you knew it, we're building this ministry. And so what we do is we go in during the school day, we actually get class time, we take in trained mentors, we do curriculum that talks about things like boundaries and healthy relationships, and we speak life and destiny and purpose over these kids, we, we talk about respect, we teach them those things that are our biblical foundations for character and success in life. And we, we do it in an environment where we get to go in and we get to, you know, before the kids come in, pray over that classroom. And I really believe we change environments when we walk in there. Because I don't need to preach to carry the Holy Spirit with me, right? right? right. When I walk in, the Holy Spirit walks yeah, in with me. So and that's what I believe. I believe one of our main purposes of being on the campus is because we bring the Holy Spirit with us when we're there. In fact, when we were at Duncanville High School one time, I just felt so strongly on my heart to pray that there would be protection over the campus, that an attack wouldn't happen. And, you know, we live in a day and age, and we live in an environment where, where school shootings do occur. We just saw one recently in Mansfield. And so I was praying just to myself. I was praying in the hallways. I told my team, we're just going to pray, and we're going to believe God. Nothing happened. We taught our classes. We went to lunch. And we come back from lunch, and we see the school police officer who we were friends with, and we saw on a weekly basis. And I said, how was lunch? And he said, well, that's it was kind of interesting. He said, we had a gun on campus, but we were able to apprehend it before anything wow. happened. Mm -hmm. Wow. And I told my team, this is why we're here. Because we have authority to take the Holy Spirit in and to pray these wow. things and pray protection. Yeah. And so we are currently, um, this year, we are on 10 campuses. We have over 3,000 students a week that we're going into. On any given Monday to Friday, we're on at least two campuses. We have teams on multiple campuses. And it has grown tremendously. And we are able to go in. We're so excited because this year students are out of control and schools are desperate for us to come in. So we have a wait list of schools that are saying, can you come, can you come, can you come? Our students need you. And so the doors have flung open for Inspire to go into schools and to mentor students. In addition to what we do weekly, we do crossover events. In fact, we have one coming up in Waxahachie where we will actually invite the students to come out for like a Christmas party. At that point, they'll meet youth pastors. They'll be invited to come back to church. So we get to do some of those kinds of events. And then each year, we throw huge luncheons where the schools actually bus their students in to Trinity Church at Cedar Hill. They hear speakers. We have a big sit-down lunch for them. It's been an incredible thing. And so when you give them missions, you're giving to organizations and ministries like mine that go in and make practical, tangible differences in schools and in kids' lives. And you know, all of that sounds really great, like all glory to God. But here's the thing. I just skipped over 2020 yeah. <laughs> because it was going good. In fact, 2020 started and it was our strongest year. We were getting ready to have our biggest and best lunches most well-funded, most well-attended. I mean, 2020, we had over 1,200 students a week. This was huge for us. We were going strong, and I was feeling so great about life. So great. So great. <laughs> Maybe some of you started 2020 like me. I asked the Lord when I was preparing, can I just do like a good little missions message and not talk about anything too personal, and I felt the Lord say, tell them about 2020. Well, 2020 was not a highlight for me. Maybe it wasn't a highlight for you. So today's message is pretty personal about my journey with 2020. But I feel like the things that I learned may be an encouragement to you. The title of my message today, you're going to know that I write curriculum for, for schools, is called The Why, The Way, The When. Can you tell I curriculum right? Mm -hmm. Short words, all the same letter, and you will remember it. Because <laughs> this is what I do for my teenagers, right? The Why, The the way, the wind. This is my journey of 2020. When schools shut down in March of 2020, we were a week away from the boys' luncheon. We were a few weeks out from the girls' luncheon, and we were in classes daily. So it was overnight. It just stopped. My whole ministry shut down. Everything that I was doing, known for 
preparing for, it just came to a screeching halt. It was the weirdest feeling to have everything stop literally overnight. And so we, we had this staff meeting at Trinity Church, and Pastor Jeremy, I remember this, and it was our last staff meeting before the church shut down. And we're all sitting around like this, and Pastor Jim is up the front, and he's talking, and, and he's kind of preparing the church for the shutdown and how we're going to function and what that's going to look like for the next however long. And everybody's just in this, like, deer in the headlights moment, because church shutting down. We never heard of that before. And so I did something that was probably good, but I'm just going to warn you about, and that is I raised my hand. In a staff meeting with Pastor Jim Hennessy, <laughs> and said, With schools being shut, I know we're going to have students that are going to struggle to eat. And with families losing jobs, it, it's going to be hard. And uh, who is going to be our point person on the staff to handle the, the calls for food? I don't know if you remember this, so you were... but he looked right at me <laughs> and he said, You. And I went, there's like a whole staff of people here, <laughs> and I don't do food ministry, right? That's not my thing. God didn't call me to food ministry. <laughs> it was not what I prepared for. It's not what I went to college for. It's not what I've been doing for the last 20 years of ministry. I started in school assembly programs, not feeding people. And with that one word, <coughs> my whole ministry just changed. The why. I thought my why was helping students speaking life, destiny, doing all these programs for them. If you would ask me what is your why, why do you do it, that would have been my why. And that's not wrong. But 2020 taught me something. I had the wrong why. Because when all that got stripped away, and it was just me and Jesus, and God was asking me to do something that was very outside of my skill set, comfort zone, and what I kind of viewed as a little beneath me. I mean, how hard is it to put green beans in a shopping bag and hand it to somebody? I have two college degrees and 20 years of ministry experience. I feel like I was a little beyond that. You may be sitting there judging me, and I, I think you'd be accurate, because that reeks of a lot of arrogance. But it also reeks of not knowing the heart of God. Right. Because about midway through, I felt the Lord say to me, Do you love me or do you love ministry? Because if you love me, you'll feed my people. I feel like I've heard Jesus say that before, right? <laughs> you love me, you feed my people. Yeah. And if you take care of my house, I will take care of your house. At that point, I did not know. I didn't know financially we would ever be able to weather COVID, and if the schools would ever let us back. And so it was this moment for me of figuring out that my why had nothing to do with ministry, it had everything to do with the heart of Jesus. Sometimes we find our identity in what we do or our talents, or, and for me, I found a lot of identity in, in some ways, it's good. It's good to be proud of who God has made you. But, but when your why is based off of that and not the heart of God, mm. you're going to set yourself up. And I needed to get back to my why. Good. We did food ministry, grocery giveaway every single week. And we took a break in September, praise the Lord, because it was one of the hardest physical ministries I'd ever done. So I was coordinating all the food. And, and it sounds really easy. Like, oh, just go to the food bank, get some food. The food bank wasn't giving us food. Go to Kroger, buy some food. Kroger didn't want to sell us food. For the first time, we had money and nobody would sell to us. So each week it was this craziness of going to Winko and Kroger and like begging managers for food. And then, as if God didn't have a sense of humor, the thing I hated worst as a child was going to the fabric store with my mother. If she wanted to go to the fabric store, it was just torture. And when everything started with COVID, You'll remember this. Nobody had masks. And so I started sourcing materials for masks. And I got a sewing team together and we started making masks. Now, you can get masks anywhere now. But remember in the beginning of COVID, elastic was like gold. I literally had to, it's probably one of my best ministry stories, I literally had to do a bathroom cash deal on Henry Hines Boulevard for elastic. 
we were only allowed to do virtual mentoring. And I was praying November and December, Tanya Brasic and all attest to this. Lord, what do you want with Inspire? Like, is this it? Is this the end? We're not allowed on campus. I don't know. And my heart just became God, I, whatever. And in December, what I thought was the worst year, thought everything was, you know, being shut down. In December, the first week, I get a call. It's a donor. It's the largest single donation in the history of Inspire. It was a six-figure donation. And I've been praying and believing God for a house. She said, I'd like to buy you and your kids a house. In what was the worst year, what looked like a setback, what looked like nothing was happening, what looked like everything was being taken away, God was setting up the greatest miracle that I had seen today. Yeah. And when I told Pastor Tim, our exact pastor, I went and I was so excited to tell him. He looked at me and he said this. He said, Tara, he said, I believe because of what you did this year in feeding people, it broke something over your life that allowed the miracle of God to happen. Wow. Oh, so good. And I remember back to that word that the Lord had given me. If you take care of my house, right. I will take care of my house. Come on. This is the wind. Wow. This is the wind. Is that God is capable of doing exceedingly abundantly above all that we can ask, even in 2020, <coughs> even in COVID, even amidst a pandemic, even when it looks like all the donations are, are stopping and everything is being held back. Here's the thing God is setting you up. Uh, so good. And I just want to encourage you, out of what was really a difficult year for me, that there is a why behind why we come here and why we serve, because we love Jesus. Because God loves you. There is a way that God has laid out that we get to work together in this thing so we're not alone. You don't struggle alone. You don't have to go through it alone. You don't have to serve alone. We can be co laborers together. And when we see the wins, because God always wins, my friends. God always wins. It may not look like it today. It may not look like it tomorrow. But there is a promise in here that God always wins. Going back to Isaiah, oh my goodness, this verse, this passage, it, it got me through 2020. But this is what Isaiah says. He says, and this is in the message, I will always show you where to go. I'll give you a full life in the emptiest of places. Hmm. Wow. 2020 looked like Come the on. emptiest of places. Yes. Yeah. And yet God was yeah. there. Yeah. God was in my 2020. And so I just want to leave that as an encouragement for you. That whatever you're going through, maybe you're sitting here and you're like, man, I needed to hear that about my why. Because God's been challenging me. Maybe you're like, man, this is a challenge to the collaborating. I, I, I need to be part of that. I want to be part of that. Or maybe you're sitting there and you're like, I need to win. I need to see the promises of God fulfilled in my life. And I just want to encourage you, hold on. Hold on, because God wins. God wins. When we yeah, follow yeah. his heart and when we stay connected to him, no matter how bad it looks, no matter how bad 2020 looked, God won. Yeah. What an incredible thing for me to be able to stand and say, because of the donation, it's why we were compelled to do as many students as we could and take on more. It's why we're having more schools ask us. And so I'm just praying, okay, Lord, keep it coming. Because as, as the need has increased, the need for resources has, and praise the Lord, we are going to keep saying yes because God wins. Mm -hmm. So this morning, I just want to, before Pastor Jeremy comes back, I want to I just pray for you. I swear where you are because I feel like there is something that I've learned in this season that I want to pray over you. And if you're in here today and you're like, I need my why back. I've lost my why. I'm doing the motions. I'm doing the right things. I'm not in sin, but... I need a way. I need God to show me how to collaborate. I need divine ideas and strategies. I want to be part of the heart of God. And I need I need some focus and I need some strategy. Maybe that's you. Or maybe you're like, I need the wind, Tara. I need to see the promises of God fulfilled in my life this year. I just want you to bow your head and close your eyes. Nobody looking around you. Just a minute. And as I pray, I tend to pray with my eyes closed too, so just this is a moment 
for you and God. As I pray for each one of these things, if it's you, would you just, between you and the Lord, just put your hand up as a sign of surrender over that prayer. No one's looking around. Lord Jesus, right now we come before you and we thank you, God, that your heart is a heart of love. It's to bring restoration. It's to restore things that are broken and lost, God. You restore people. You restore things, God. And God, today we come and we ask, God, that your heart would burn inside of us. That you would cause the passion and love for you to spill out our love for other people. And if we have lost our lives, if we have lost the reason that we serve you, then God, I just pray for your people that you would restore that back to them. Let them feel your love in such deep ways. God, I pray for people today that need a way. That they have they've held their mind, but God, they need divine strategy. They need wisdom. Yeah. They need